Let me come to you. I'll start from there. I will not start from your constituency. How much are you spending averagely in a month? I am I'm in the truth of my primaries. Mm. So I, I'm spending heavily. You're spending heavily? Yeah. It's, um, You're bleeding? I'm bleeding. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> to, be, to be very honest with you. And it's, it's very expensive. And it will bleed it. And our okay. constituents no feel it. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> you so. can say that. You can say that. Yeah, but okay. we are, every NDC MP presently is bleeding heavily. Mm. Yes. God but why, though? God thanks. You see, uh, the, there's a very queer feeling to this. It's as though um, you maintain the constituents for all these years, and then you maintain your branch executives as well. Then when you say you maintain, what do you mean? Yes, you, 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 you sponsor a lot of things. You sponsor funerals. Education. You pay for rent, you pay for education, you pay medical bills, you pay for adoris, you pay for child support, you pay for farming, you know. So, and the demands come bits and pieces. Every day they pour in. Even this morning, I have received a lot of requests. Personal interventions. Mm. Now, this continues until when it gets to el another election cycle such as this, everyone thinks that, well, then this is the time to put my demand across because we're under pressure to meet it. So you don't incur somebody's displeasure. So that is by the by. In respect of Saudi, um, in terms of education, even though I'm an MP and uh, um, uh, an opposition MP in a government that I do not belong, I can say that I have lobbied for a lot of things for my constituency. If you go to Gafco, for instance, in Piki, um, there's a four-story get fund project. It's been completed for girls. They are using it. Um, the Gafco College Road is being done as part of the Eastern Corridor uh, main road works. Uh, it's never happened before, but it's happening under my watch and lobbying. I, I actually had to mobilize the CEO, the group CEO of First Sky, group of contractors to go there and make his own assessment and approve of the request. The same Gafco, there's a very huge assembly hall com complex which is um, under construction. Mm. As a result of my intervention, payment contractor is receiving payments, so the project is ongoing. That's just for GAFCO alone. If you go to uh, Piki Secondary Technical at Wudome, mm. there's a brand new guest dormitory uh, constructed by GetFan, also through my lobbying intervention. There's a, a twin boys hostel, also through my intervention. Um, an assembly hall has been, comp uh, an administration uh, block has been completed, but not uh, handed over yet. Uh, if we go to the basic schools, if we go to Chanakbe, which is my community, a brand new secondary school started by John Mahama, but one or two projects have been completed. Mm. But very secondary technical, we are a brand new boys dormitory has been completed by giving to girls, because where the girls were, um, it's uh, this much to be desired. So it was swapped. So now we are making efforts to get another one constructed for the boys. But the SHS needs a lot. Pestec, the old students themselves have done some painting. They painted one or two blocks. Mm. I've also done a lot mm. of intervention in terms of infrastructure. Um, in terms of teaching aid, I have supplied laptops to the education directorate to be given to ICT teachers to support teaching of ICT in the constituency. It's not every school that got it, but um, that's a phase one. There will be a phase two. Okay. Now, I'm constructing a kindergarten through my use of common fund at one of the communities called Baibome. I've renovated classroom blocks at uh, Agodake, brand new. I've also... Um, through my intervention at the assembly and with support of the assembly, constructed the brand new GSS block with ancillary facilities at Palime Dugan. If you go to two vocational, it's a, there's, there's a huge improvement as part of the uh, government's program to improve all the vocational institutions in the country. Honestly, if I wasn't sitting in parliament that day, I would have lost out. 
Mm. Because when the list of schools came, <laughs> two vocational was missing completely. So I needed to speak to Speaker Michael Kui, draw his attention to it. And then he agreed that if I indeed I have a school like that, then they had to be included. So quickly we had to take photographs of the existing school provided to... Then it was Dr. Mike, um, uh, Dr. Prempe, uh, who, yeah, was, who was then Napu, who was education minister, and he approved of it. Mm. And truth be told, we got more projects than even the originally selected school. We got five projects. A 75-bed capacity dormitory for both boys and girls. Mm. So that's about 150. Then we have a brand new administration block for two vocational. Then we have a brand new workshop as well as a, a one-story uh, uh, classroom block. So that is for two vocational alone. Now, if we get to support to the education directorate, I support my BEC candidates every year. I sponsor their extra classes so that they get better, they, they prepare better as candidates. Um, I also support them with materials and all that. And I support the directorate sometimes in their monitoring and evaluation when they have to go down, around and, and monitor the schools. There's no funding. The, 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 the secretariat doesn't receive any money anymore. So it's the MPs who, who have to give them money, support them in terms of even maintenance of vehicles, fueling, office maintenance, all those things. I do that. When we speak of health, mm. um, I have, have health centers in Kumbunikope, Tongochanakwe, Palimeduga, Tongokaira, Abuichita, Chate, Todome. Bever, which is the district capital. Then I have a health center or, or health center or chips compound at Bay Bome. Health center at the Palime. Uh, chips compound at Sanga. Mm -hmm. Health center at Shinu. Health center, which is now a polyclinic at Peki Jake. Then a chips compound at Peki Udome. Then a health center at uh, Peki Ajokwe. Then I have uh, the Peking Government Hospital, which is at Chami. Mm. I've supported them supply medical equipment, very expensive, but which is helping them to be able to offer first aid and medical attention to. Um, you know, my community, is, my constituency is um, uh, mainly rural, apart from Peking conurbation and whatever the capital, the rest are fairly rural. So you need those health centers to be in to be well equipped to be able to handle the, the medical emergencies that will emerge from those communities before you could be rushing them to Peki Government Hospital, which is the main health facility as the mainstay of the, of the district. Now, right. successfully lobbied for, again, Agenda 111. Again, if I were not in Parliament that day, would have lost out. Because when government decided to do a, the, the phase one of the projects, they selected, initially the list came, it was 36. And in the Volta region, instead of seven districts that didn't have district hospitals and therefore needed to be factored in, it was six. And again, where Pepe was missing. Mm. So again, I had to get up. And then Speaker Michael Kui said, yes, you were very instrumental in passing the emergency bills. You were on your feet contributing very well towards the legislation. So if there are benefits as a fallout of those legislation as part of the COVID-19 emergency uh, relief uh, responses, you have to benefit. So, uh, Honorable Minister, kindly consider Honorable Defiamepo. Mm. And I was considered. Right. right. And I, let, me, let me say that the project, the president has been there twice. Okay. Um, he visited the site twice within um, last year. And... Uh, um, it's progressing. I think the last the last time I, I visited there was two weeks ago. Uh, things, if if I know, I would have sent you. I would have forwarded the photographs to you. Um, uh, Strassels uh, have been. Yeah. <laughs> Strassels have been. You know. Your your counterpart has yeah. just shared some photos with me. So okay. Eventually, when you, yes, you get I would. yours. Yes, I would. Yeah, no, they are here. here. They are here. Well, they are here. I'll just. Sure. Well, after sure. I speak, uh, after speaking, I'll send them. Strassels have been. Are fixed on top, so roofing will soon be done. Okay, and then so there's, and it's a, it's be a huge boost 
especially to the district capital, because mm. this is a growth pool project. It has its way of attracting other businesses in terms of accommodation, pharmacies, and all that. So, so I, I, good. I get exactly what you're saying. I wanted yeah. to dedicate the first 20 minutes mm. to yes. this conference, which we've done. Yes. We've, we've hit eight so Social intervention, I've done a lot. I've also built a police station for my predecessor started it. I came to finish at Peke District Command. Mm. So the command used to be in a rented premises at Peke Jake. Mm. Now they've moved to Avetile. And during my time, they didn't have a vehicle. Right. So I had a district commander called DSP Autry, who is the director for transport now at the headquarters. And he, together with myself, we love it and got a brand new pickup for the Peke District Command, which they are using now. I have, I, interesting, I have two police commands, mm -hmm. the Kweve District Command and the Peki District Command. Peki is the, is the original, but Kweve got it because of the elevation as the district capital. Right. So they don't have vehicles. Mm -hmm. They have an old one, which I keep maintaining, and I think that they also deserve a new one. Okay. <music>